In a July 1992 copy of Game Pro Magazine, they announced a Sega CD game called Fantasy Star 4 The Return of Alice. Fantasy Star 4 The Return of Alice is due in 12 meg form for the Mega Drive this year. The CD version will be 20 times the size of the cart. The story involves an intergalactic slave trade and occurs right after Fantasy Star 3, which rumor has it will also come to CD. Suitably enhanced, of course. Fantasy Star vets are forewarned that the Alice connection is shaky. The name's in the game for nostalgia only, but rest assured that the Dark Force is involved. I find it interesting that it says 12 megs, because the Fantasy Star 4 that we did end up getting was a 24 meg cart, so I can't even imagine what half the megs would have looked like. Also, an intergalactic slave trade? That sounds nothing like the Fantasy Star 4 that we did end up getting. And since it says after Fantasy Star 3, I wonder which ending of Fantasy Star 3 they would have made canon. If the return of Alice on Sega CD was going to be 20 times the size of the Genesis port, that means it would have been 240 megs. Now most of those megs would have just been, you know, the CD quality music, the voice acting, and a bunch of FMV anime cutscenes. Could you imagine the Fantasy Star 4 that we got on Sega CD with voice acting and anime cutscenes? I always thought that part of the reason that Fantasy Star 4 was so awesome was because we got so many cutscenes. I mean, it was just, you know, static images of, like, manga panels or manga panels. But think back to Fantasy Star 1, Fantasy Star 2, Fantasy Star 3. Like, these cutscenes that we would get, you would play the game for hours before you would just, just to see one cutscene. So, in Fantasy Star 4, man, there you're getting cutscene after cutscene. You go to a new town, cutscene. You talk to that NPC, cutscene. You know, there's so many different uh, people in the game. There's so many characters, and when you have all these manga-style cutscenes, you know, it, it really helps you follow the characters. It helps you understand the stakes. And, I mean, hell, the banter between Chaz and Rune. I mean, that's all you need. Now, even though this Return of Alice game was gonna have, you know, voice acting and anime cutscenes, I mean, it, it would have been nothing like the Fantasy Star 4 that we did end up getting. I mean, Intergalactic Slave Trade and the Return of Alice Landale. You know, I mean, it, it's interesting because Alice Landale actually did return in Fantasy Star Gaiden, which was a Sega Game Gear game that was exclusively released in Japan. There is an English translation, though, and I've been meaning to play that game. Now another really cool feature that was going to be in Fantasy Star 4 The Return of Alice was they were going to bring back the 3D dungeons from the first Fantasy Star game. There is one surviving screenshot out there and you can actually see that those monsters, those actually did make the cut. Those actually were in the final product of Fantasy Star 4 that we did get. First of all, the Sega Master System was able to do these 3D dungeons. You know, I get that they could only fit one monster uh, on the screen at a time and they would have like you know multiple hp bars to signify the fact that there are you know you're fighting five different monsters but hell think about shining in the darkness on sega genesis you know that's not a sega cd game that was a game that also had 3d dungeons and there's six enemies on the screen at once so i think the reason that they scrapped this 3d dungeon idea because let's face it the fantasy star 4 that we got why, why didn't that have 3D dungeons in the game? Well, in my opinion, you know, I don't know the, the, the real answer, but I, I think that these 3D first-person perspective dungeons, I think they were just outdated by the time Fantasy Star 4 was being made. By the early 90s, this was already outdated. I mean, there were NES games that had first-person perspective modes, like Goonies 2 and Fester's Quest, you know? There's, there's, there's probably more. I mean, there was definitely some PC games that had that. And, you know, we know that Fantasy Star 1 had it, we know Shining in the Darkness had it in 1991, and, like, I think the reason why it became outdated was just because, you know, it, it's, it's a maze. It's, you're wandering around a maze. I mean, you have to draw out the dungeons on, on, a, on a piece of paper. I think that, especially since Final Fantasy and, and Dragon, Dragon's Quest and all these other RPGs are coming out. No, none of them are doing these first-person perspectives, and they're selling just fine. People are liking the games just fine. So I think that you know when you're when you're in these dungeons. I mean, think about Fantasy Star 2. Could you imagine the Fantasy Star 2 dungeons in first person? You got to remember Sega Ages Fantasy Star on the Nintendo Switch. They added a map to the dungeons. 
okay? And it's amazing. I mean, it makes the game so accessible and just so awesome. I mean, the game is just insanely less frustrating when you have that map. So yeah, I mean, I would do some crazy things if it meant I could get some more information on this game. You know, whether it's leaked assets, leaked voice acting clips, leaked anime cutscenes. I mean, I don't even think they made those anime cutscenes. But, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take anything I can get. I mean, there's got to be some files on someone's computer in Japan, in, in, in the attic, or in, like, some fucking dank dungeon or something. So, I mean, hey, if you have any more information about this game that I didn't cover, please leave a comment. Uh, I mean, I'm just dying to get any information on this game that I can.